Hello everyone and welcome to another episode where I'm talking about my new Avalon Harmonix synthesizer modules. In this episode I will be covering two modules, not one. Specifically I will be covering my logical modules and that will, would be log x and k0. So let's start. First of all, what do these modules actually do? They are basically a digital logic module. They don't really use any digital parts so no micro microprocessors or anything like that. But they are actually, they basically convert gate signals to something useful. They use logic gates to do some sort of processing. Um, in this case, log X module has two logical gates of your choice, depending on which chip is installed. There is a list of different chips which you can install, which are all compatible. And it can become either an AND gate or an OR gate, maybe a NOR gate, XOR. You can use these different gates to somehow control your gate trigger signals, etc. K0 is also a logic gate module, but in this case it is a triple NOT gate. In other words, you have three NOT gates, so some signal that is high will become low, and some signal that is low will become high. So I will now do a few little patches with this and try and show off what you can do with this. Okay, for this first very, very simple patch, what I'm doing is I'm feeding two square LFOs directly into the first log X. This log X is specifically using the end logical gate, which means that once both inputs are high, it will be outputting a high signal as well. I would right away like to add that this module is protected against negative inputs and against high inputs. Basically, you can feel it almost any kind of signal and it will just work. I will later also show that you can feed it audio signals. But for now, let's focus on this. So after I plug this in, this goes into one of my envelope generators. As you can see, with this LFO, one is going very fast on off, on off, on off, or rather plus minus, plus minus, plus minus, and the other is going minus for a long time and then plus for a long time. And as you can see, as soon as it becomes plus, the module starts sending notes out. We can use this for various things. We can also do some sort of combination with the LFO. Like, here I will speed them up. Now each time that they intersect, they will cause a little sound to play. If I prolong the sustain... Here that kind of interesting pattern emerges out of that. Let's see something else what we can patch up. Okay, in this slightly different patch, instead of using two LFOs, I'm using one LFO to feed one of the inputs, and the other is going into my Keystep Pro on one of the drum inputs. So once I hold down one of the keys on my keyboard, it basically lets through the LFO signal to turn an envelope generator on and off. That way you can basically gate your signals and such. In this slightly different patch, I got rid of the LFO, I'm no longer using it, and now instead I'm f generating some sort of a beat using the Petrock module. By the way, amazing module, I highly suggest you to look it up. Basically I'm generating a signal using PEM's new workout, a pro workout, sorry, and putting it into Petrock, going into one of the inputs of my log X, and as you can see, it's not doing anything until I press keyboard on my Keystep Pro. As you can see, while I'm holding it down, it 
lets the signal go through, basically. Very simple. Okay, now I am using the second log X. This one is configured to use the OR gate, meaning that no matter which of the inputs is high, it will also be outputting a high signal. So, as you can see, I now am running both A and B sections of bedrock and putting them into the two inputs, and I'm basically combining these two inputs. So, if uh, what I will do now is unplug one of them, so you can hear it. This is only the A section. Now I will unplug it. I will try plugging in the B section. Combine them together. As you can see, there's much more of them. It's basically combining. Okay, now I've went back to using the LFOs to drive this, and I've done something a little bit interesting. I'm basically using putting both LFOs into the OR gate. So we should be able to get some interesting pattern out of this. Very interesting effect. I would like to re remind again that AND and OR are not the only gates you can use with this, you can also use an XOR gate, which is has a high output only if one of the inputs is high, and all sorts of combinations, so you can really do interesting things. Okay, now I will show off a little bit the KNOT module. This module is cons consists of three different NOT gates, and they are actually chained together. What this means is that the output of the first gate goes into the input of the second, and the output of the second goes into the input of the third. This can be very useful because in case you want to make a signal go high, low, high, low, or low, high, low, high, then you can use this. Basically, the way how this works is if an input signal is high, the output will be low, and if the out input is low, the output will be high. So what I'm doing here is, this is connected to my Keystep Pro, and this is connected to my envelope generator, and as you can see, when I press the key, it inverts all three of the gates, and I release it, it plays the note. Obviously the behavior is different if I plug it into this port. Now I press the key, it plays, I release, it doesn't play anything. In order to interrupt the behavior I just explained, as soon as you plug any kind of cable into one of the other inputs, like here, you will see that it's now entirely dependent on this input, and it no longer passes the signal forward. This counts for all three of the inputs, as you can see. So let's now try and come up with some of the patches the way how this module works best is if you combine it with the log x module. So let's have a try. Okay, I have now done quite a bit of patching here, but in essence, it is not very complicated. The way how it works is I have the signal from Keystep Pro going into the KNOT module, and it will do an inversion. By default, first output is high, second is low. Once I press the key, the second will become high and the first one will become low. It will basically swap it. And we have the first output going into the first end gate, the second output going into the second end gate. The other inputs of the end gates, the first one gets the signal from Petrock, and the second one gets the signal from an LFO. And 
their outputs are now combined together using the OR gate here and it generates a signal. So let's listen to how this sounds like. This is the signal generated by Petro, as you can hear. And now if I press the key on the Keystep Pro, as you can hear, it switches over to the LFO signal. We can obviously automate this, we can connect it to a second LFO. Like that. Now one LFO controls which signal path is active. First signal path, second signal. First signal path, second signal. Signal, first signal, second signal. Overall, pretty simple, but you can use this to create some sort of a signal selector so you can change on the fly where your triggers are coming from. This can be pretty useful in case you are generate, creating some sort of a generative composition. What I will now start patching up is some sort of audio patches because these modules can also work with audio signals. So let's see what we can come up with. Okay, I have now created a sort of audio patch with these. I'm feeding two oscillators into it. Specifically, I'm feeding the ST modular silin oscillator and the ST modular honey eater module. I mean feeding them into the log x module that has the end gate, outputting the signal into my C mod 8 so I can correct it a bit. I would like to add that it will have a massive DC offset because this is a logical module, this is not an audio module. I'm just offsetting it down a little bit and then I'm outputting it to the sound. So let's hear how it sounds like. That's pretty intense. We can play around a bit with the signal. What the module is basically doing is finding the combination of the two signals and whenever both are high enough, it outputs a high signal, creating a very distorted square wave. Wild. You can get all sorts of sounds with this. 
Let's see what happens with the ore gate. As you can hear, it's quite a different sound here. Let's play around. Now we will play around a little bit with Knot because it has its own very very cool audio functionalities. Okay, so Knot in itself is three times not gate, and if you feed the output of the last not gate back into the first not gate, you get a kind of oscillator. I will not do this directly because there's not much point. It is a static around 10 kilohertz. It will depend a lot on a lot of stuff from temperature to chips themselves, etc. And other components. But what we can do is connect it to something like a slew limiter. In this case, I'm connecting it to my R and F module. And what I will be doing is basically the output of the last gate goes into the input of my RNF and the output from it goes back into the first gate. And what I will be able to create is all sorts of very weird glitchy noises. So let's have a listen. Here a very digital noise, but if we start changing the knobs, this will change quite dramatically. Basically, depending on how fast the signal rises and falls, it dramatically changes the sound. You could also emulate the sound of a vinyl scratch or something like that with this, like the dust on the vinyl. Or make it screw. some points we can get quite a nice white noise. Use this to make some sort of swoosh effect in music. Okay, there is one more patch I would like to show with K-Note, so let's have a look. Okay, 
this is now a very simple patch with which we can achieve uh, pulse width modulation basically and what I'm doing is I'm taking a triangle waveform feeding it into my CV mod 8 so that I can offset its position its output is fed into the input of one of the NOT gates and the output of that NOT gate goes to audio so as you can hear once I move the offset <laughs> can get a password modulation. Depending on the gain, I can also set where the edge is. a visualization of the signals on the little LEDs here on KNOT. Yeah, that would be it. These are my logical modules, LogX and KNOT, and they can be pretty useful for not only controlling different gate signals and triggers, but also for doing all sorts of interesting audio effects. That's all for now, and I'll see you around next time. Bye-bye.